Hello everyone, I am Mo Yanshi. Here I am going to present our work on the effects of persuasive dialogues, where we test the influence of the bot identities and inquiry strategies on the persuasion outcome. This is joint work with Xue Wei Wang, Yong Ji O, Jing Wen Zhang, Saraj Sahe, and Zhou Yu from UC Davis, CMU, and Intel Labs. From previous study on human human donation persuasion dialogues, we found that people with different personalities respond differently to persuasion strategies. For example, for people who are identified as more neurotic in their Big Five tests, personal inquiries such as Do you have kids may increase their donation probability. But for people who endorse authority more in their moral foundation test, personal inquiries might decrease their donation probability. These findings make us wonder the impact of inquiries on persuasion. Do more personal inquiries lead to a better persuasion outcome? And also, these findings are all from human-human interactions. What if the conversation partner is actually a chatbot? Would these observations still be true? Here is the outline of today's presentation. I will first talk about our hypothesis and the related theories, which are motivations behind our study. And then I will describe the charity donation persuasion task and how the agenda-based persuasion chatbot is built. Next, I will dive into the experiments and results, including the donation outcome, partner impression and conversation quality, and also inconsistent donation behavior. Finally, I will conclude the talk with some key takeaways. So how does the robot's identity influence as human? The computer arc social actor theory states that regardless of whether the partner is assumed as a machine or a human, individuals may hold similar perceptions towards a partner because intelligent machines are perceived to be able to follow social norms and behave in a socially desirable manner. This leads to our first hypothesis, which is that the two different identities we prepared for the chatbot will give us equivalent outcomes. However, the Uncanny Valley of Mind theory tells a different story. A study on Uncanny Valley effects in human chatbot interactions showed that the participants experienced more negative feelings with a complex animated chatbot than with a simpler text chatbot. This leads to our second hypothesis. There is an interaction effect between bot identity and persuasion inquiries and outcomes. On the persuasive inquiry side, the question behavior effect says that even simply asking questions about the behavior can lead to changing behaviors. For instance, asking you questions about physical exercise may lead you to wonder when was the last time you hit the gym and possibly lead you to do more exercise. And also, previous study shows that different types of inquiries have different impacts on people with different personalities. And this leads to our third hypothesis, that personal inquiries will yield better persuasion outcomes than non-personal inquiries. Our persuasion task in this study is about charity donation. In this task, the chatbot will talk with the human users and persuade them to donate to the charity Saves Children. Different from previous role-play tasks, this task has real incentives since the donation will be deducted from the task payment. There are four parts in the task. A pre-task survey that assesses the user's psychological profiles. Then the user will have a conversation with the chatbot. After the conversation, they will input their donation amount privately and do a post-task survey on the dialogue quality, etc. We use an agenda-based chatbot in this task since this type of chatbots follows human design agenda and therefore it's easier to control the experimental variables. Here is an example conversation between the bot and the user. This bot has a human name Jesse and acts as a human. It starts by greeting the user and says, Hello, how are you doing today? The user replies back and says, Doing well, how about yourself? Then the chatbot Jesse replies and brings up the first non-personal inquiry. Have you heard of the organization Save the Children before? Then the user replies and asks Jesse more information about the organization. Jesse starts introducing the organization and follows up with the second non-personal inquiry. Have you donated to a charity before? The agenda-based persuasive bot behind the scene has three parts. Natural language understanding part which converts a sentence to a dialogue act. 
Then given this dialog act, the dialog manager chooses a system dialog act to reply according to the agenda. The final part, natural language generation, converts the system dialog act to human readable sentences. Because in query type is our experimental condition, we use predefined template sentences to control the language. For non inquiries, we retrieve sentences from human human corpus to encourage diversity. This is agenda using the study. The system will first greet the user, and then, based on the experimental condition, it brings up different inquiries, as shown in the green box. For example, if this user belongs to the personal inquiry only group, then only personal inquiries will be asked. After the inquiry, different persuasion appeals, such as emotion appeals in the gray box, will be used in order. During the conversation, the bot will ask the user if they are willing to donate. If they agree, they will enter the agreed donation module in the blue box and confirm their donation. There is also a factual QA module shown in the red box, which will be activated, which will be activated every time the user asks questions and this module will give out the answer and go back to the main flow. Now let's move on to the experiments. We have two independent variables in this study, the bot identity and the inquiry types. We prepare two identities, Jesse and Jesse bot for the chatbot to take. Jesse is a unisex human name and is used in the human identity group, while Jesse bot is used in the bot identity group. These names will be used as a prefix of each system sentence in the interface, as shown in the figure. There are two types of inquiries, non-personal inquiries and personal inquiries, and therefore four experimental conditions. Non-personal inquiries are relevant to the task, but not personal, such as have you heard of Save the Children? Personal inquiries are related to personal in information, such as do you have kids? We have a total of 790 participants in this study, and we can see that overall participants came from a relatively diverse background. We assess three types of results in the study, the persuasion outcome measured by the donation probability, the partner impressions such as competence and confidence, and also the conversation quality measured by engagement, naturalness, and persuasiveness. Let's first look at the persuasion outcome. On average, the donation probability across all conditions is 45%, which is smaller than the probability of 54 observed in the earlier human-human persuasion corpus named persuasion for good. Also, we didn't notice significant differences on donation probability between different groups. However, we do have an interesting observation that regardless of the label, Participants had their own judgments on the bot identity. In the post survey, we asked the user, Do you feel like you were interacting with a chatbot or a human? Using answers from that question, we found that in the Jesse bot condition, surprisingly, there were still 36.1% participants reporting that they thought they were chatting with a human. While in the Jesse condition, only 34.3% of the participants thought they were talking to a human. Therefore, we show the donation probability breakdown by the user perceived identity instead of the displayed identity and found that people are more likely to donate if they think their partner is a human. This disapproves our first hypothesis that computers are social actors and shows that the identity did matter in the persuasion outcome. Further, there is an interaction between inquiry and identity. If the personal inquiry is used, the users are more likely to make a donation if they perceive the partner as a human than if they perceive the partner as a bot. And this proves our second hypothesis related to the uncounting belly theory. All these observations indicate that people's perception really matters in our study. In the post survey, we also asked why they think they are interacting with a human or a bot. Here are the answers. Some said that they were divided and suspected the displayed identity because the conversation seemed human-like, yet the replies were too quick. Some participants didn't believe in the human identity because their partner wouldn't take the answer. So we did observe, observe participants had suspicions on the bot displayed identity. So it's natural to ask, 
in their interaction between the suspicion and the experimental conditions. Indeed, we observed a significant interaction effects between the displayed identity and the participant's suspicion. Especially, people who talk to Jesse and also perceived it as a human were the most likely to donate. In contrast, the participants who talked to Jesse but suspected it was a bot had the lowest donation probability, which supported the Uncanny Valley theory, showing people may feel uncomfortable when interacting with a bot with a seemingly human identity. Given that the user suspicion interacted with the experimental conditions, in order to see a clear result, we decided to reduce the data to the group of participants who believed in the displayed identity and performed the same analysis on the reduced dataset. Here is the dataset split. The reduced dataset consists of people who don't suspect the identity label displayed to them. Let's see the donation probability on the reduced dataset. Indeed, we see that the Jesse bot would decrease the donation probability. And then when they recognize the bot identity, the users didn't like the bot to ask them personal questions. Now let's talk about how the bot identity and inquiry strategy would influence the impression and conversation quality. The left figure shows different impressions by the displayed identity, and the right figure shows the impression by the perceived identity. The right figure shows many significant results, but the left figure doesn't. This further confirmed that people's suspicion did meddle the results, and we should use the reduced dataset onwards. The results on the reduced dataset shows that when participants thought they were talking to a human, they would think that their partner was more competent, confident, sincere, and warm. And the conversation was also considered as more engaging, natural, and persuasive. Here are some takeaways. Firstly, it's not the displayed identity, but the perceived identity that really matters. Second, asking personal questions would hurt the persuasion if the agency is perceived as a bot due to the uncanny valley theory. And if the user perceives a bot as a human, they would have a better impression and feel the conversation was more engaging. In our analysis, we also have some interesting findings about the inconsistent donation behaviors. During the conversation, the chat, the users will mention how much they are going to donate, but the actual donation was made privately after the conversation. We notice that some users' actual donation amount is different from the amount they mentioned. We define this as inconsistent donation behavior. We fitted the inconsistent donation behavior with the perceived identity and the persuasive inquiries. The results show that when the users thought they were interacting with a human, they were more likely to donate inconsistently. This seemed surprising at the first sight, but actually made sense. Because when talking to a human, people might have experienced the social pressure to save face and act more generously by indicating at a bigger donation. Of course, the agenda-based persuasive chatbot is far from perfect, and the system quality certainly impacts the persuasion outcome. Our next step is to build a generation-based persuasive chatbot that is more consistent and less repetitive. And the end goal is to build a personalized persuasive dialogue system for social good that is able to tailor the persuasive strategies according to the receiver's personality. To conclude, we investigate two factors in persuasive dialogues, the bot identity and the persuasive inquiries and found that a human identity would increase donation probability. Also, persuasive inquiries interact with the robot's identity. Further, the inconsistent donation behavior also interacted with the two factors. Due to limited amount of time, I skipped some other interesting findings, such as what correlates with the donation, but they are all in the paper. Please feel free to check them out. You can scan the QR code to get the link to the paper. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.